Hello, everyone. You're listening to Unlocking Greatness podcast with Zenja Glass. Everyone calls me Z, so welcome. I want to jump right into this video. Uh, I think I'm going to call this video, I Need a Strategy, uh, or I might call it, I Need a Plan. One of those titles is I'm going to call this video. If you in any way find yourself lacking, uh, or if you find yourself in a situation where things have been taken away from you, or you find yourself in situations where, uh, you know, you, somehow, somehow you find yourself having less than what you had before and um, you're panicking or you're worrying or you're concerned about, okay, how is this going to work out? God, how am I going to be able to do this? H- how did you, how did you take me from, I don't know, I'm just making something up right now, but how did you take me from, I had my own home and now I'm, I'm sleeping on someone's couch. How did you take me from I had two cars and now I'm taking the bus? How did you take me from having X amount in my account and now I have nothing or I have very little or whatever the case may be? It doesn't have to be a tangible thing. So I don't want to make this about tangible items. Let me make that clear. But whatever it is, if you find yourself lacking, I think that you're going to enjoy. I pray that you I don't even want to use the word enjoy, because as you guys know, this is not entertainment. Uh. I pray that you find yourself being greatly encouraged. When I tell you that God just gave this to me, literally before uh, we press record and I started, you know, talking on this camera and I say we because I have someone here helping me right now. But before that button was even pressed, I literally said, God, you got to give me what your people need to hear. And he put in my heart to talk about Gideon. Now, I want to just kind of premise this a little bit is that when you find yourself lacking, many times we find ourselves saying, you know, uh, man, I need, I, 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 I need more. God, how can I, how can I do what I need to do when I only have just this little bit? You know, uh, why did you allow so much to be taken away uh, and leave me sitting with just this? What is this about? This is why I love the story of Gideon so much. In the book of Judges, chapter 6 and 7, and I'm not going to read all through it. You know, you guys can read the story yourself. But in chapter 6, if you look at just a little bit of it, I'm going to talk a little little fast, um, but hopefully you can keep up with me. But in chapter 6, uh, Gideon uh, uh, considered himself the weakest in his clan. This is in verse like 15. You know, when Gideon, bas- when, when it, it, it's, let me just slow down. Let me slow down. Okay, I'm going to back up in verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon said, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I'm and I'm the least in my family. The Lord answered, I'll be with you. And he talks about, you know, how he's going to strike, you know, down uh, the Midianites. And, and, and Gideon goes on to talk about, you know, basically, God, you got to give me one or two signs. You, you, you got to give me some signs to show me that this is really you talking. I won't even get into the fact that he was asking God for signs because I think all of us have done that at times where we're like, Lord, is this really you or am I speaking to myself? Is this really you, you know, or, or am I just kind of making up what I want to hear? So I think it's interesting the Bible talks about some of the signs that Gideon asked for in order for God to show him. But here's the part I just want to soak in for a minute. And I apologize if I'm talking a little fast, but sometimes when this fire gets inside of my bone, it's so hard for me to contain it. So. What's beyond amazing about Gideon is this man had about 32,000 men uh, ready to go into some sort of a battle. All right. So in in chapter seven, and you think 32,000 men is a lot, but it actually was not compared to what he was going up against, just so you know. But anyway, he had about 32,000 men. So uh, my Bible was all messed up, but hopefully it's not blocking the camera. So in chapter seven, verse two, the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver the Midian into their hands. Interesting. In order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her. Announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remain. So I just had 32,000 men and now you just took away about 20 something and 10,000 men remain. But check this out in verse four. But the Lord said to Gideon, there's still too many. Then he says, take them down to the water. And I'll sift uh, them there for you. If I say this one shall go, then he shall go. But if I say this one should not go, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord uh, told him, separate those who lap their water, uh, lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. 300 men lap with their hands to their mouths. 
All the rest got down on their knees to drink. Check this out. The Lord said to Gideon, Ooh, this is just so good. With the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest um, of the Israelites to their tents, but kept 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now, this is what's cool about this. This man just went from having 32, was 32 or 33,000? I think it was 32,000, about 32,000 men. And in almost no time, God lowered that down to 300. So let's put that in our kind of terms. You know, you just had, uh, I hate to reduce this down to money because then I, I don't want to reduce it to those terms, but let's just make it tangible for us. You just had $32,000 and God just reduced it down to $300. That's kind of how I look at it, you know. So whatever it is, you had multitudes and multitudes of more let's just say that and now you only have just a really small amount left first of all I think it's fascinating why God said he did that which we just we just read it he says in order that they may not boast against me that their own strength save them so what's fascinating about this is that God specializes in the impossible that's what I'm trying to get you guys to see he specializes in the impossible sometimes I think that we can uh, be fooled or trick ourselves or fall into a trap. That's probably a better, a better way of putting it by feeling like God's left us or, uh, I, I, you know, he must not want me to do this because, uh, you know, he allowed all of this to be taken away. Does that make sense? You know, if he wanted me to, uh, you know, to be able to do X, Y, and Z, then why, why did he allow this to happen? You know, I have so little left. Where is God? I just had 32,000 men and now I have 300. Let me take my butt back home because this ain't going to work. I want to breathe light into life. I don't even know if I should say breathe life because some people may take that the wrong way. I want to breathe. Speak. I'll say speak. I want to speak words of encouragement into the hearts of people who are feeling that they have so much less than what they had before. And now it's almost impossible for you to be able to do what you feel that God put in your heart to do. If that is you, this message is for you today because I didn't know what I was going to talk about before I turned this camera on. Honest to God, I didn't. And I said, Lord, you just got to give me the fire. What is it that you want? This message is for you. Just consider perhaps God allowed your army to be lowered down to only about 300 people so that when he does get done doing what he's about to do in your life, you would know it's only by his grace that it was able to be done. I've shared with you guys many times my story. I've shared with you guys about all the things I've been through, you know, and, and some of the major woes, whether it's physical wise with my family, uh, marital stuff, financial, when I was a teen with my mom and my siblings and being homeless and all the things that I've gone through. And it is amazing to me what he was able to do with so little. But anyway, this is not even about me. I want to make this about one major thing. Sometimes, I believe, many times, it's not so much that we need more. We just need for God to blow on what he's already given us. We just need his strategy and his plan. I haven't even gotten to the good part. Check this out. Because you thought that was the good part. That wasn't even the good part. So after all that happened, and he has about 300 men, check this out. So I got 300 men, and I'm going up again. How many people? Like, okay, check this out. I'm just going to pick up in verse 17. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who were with me blow our trumpets, and, and, and uh, then, then from all around the camp, blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon in the, um, oh, let me back there just a little bit more. If you back up a little bit more, it says um, that the Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands, dividing the 300 men into three companies. He placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them uh, with torches inside. So that, that was verse um, like 16, so I apologize. Then he says, watch me, and he basically says, do what I do. Then if you, if you go down to verse 19, Gideon and the 100 men with him reached the edge of the camp. At the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies, so each company was 100 men. Hopefully you guys are following that. 
the three companies blew their trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the 300 trumpets sound, the Lord um, caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. And then it just goes on to talk about how, you know, the Lord led them into victory. Do you, are you guys feeling what I'm feeling from that? I don't know why this never dawned on me until today that it really hit me. God did not give them more. He gave them a strategy. He gave them a plan. They had their jars and their torches and I guess some kind of way, what were they throwing them down or something, making, smashing them, making loud sounds. And so it appeared, it sounded as if there was probably hundreds of thousands of, you know, soldiers all around them. You get my point? God did so much more with just that little bit that they had. He did the impossible. And, and, and it caused, uh, you know, uh, whoever it was that they were fighting against, it caused them to flee. Catch that in your spirit and be encouraged by that. Sometimes, and I will speak for myself, we think we need so much more to do what God has asked us to do or to pursue a dream or to start a business or to what, whatever it is. Because, again, it's not even about business and stuff. It could be whatever. When all we need is the strategy in the plan of God. Go back and read that story. Read chapter 6. Read how Gideon felt about himself. Read chapter 7. Read it all through with what God did. Because if you really think about it, what was the whole point of that? Like, wh like why even lure his army down from 32 or so thousand men to 300? Sometimes, I don't know, you guys know I'm kind of weird. So sometimes I'm just, I think to myself, well, God, what was the whole point of doing that in the first place? But now I actually get it. God is showing me over and over again, I can do so much more with less when are you going to get this and understand that that's my specialty? You think Gideon needs 32,000? I'm not going to even let them win the war with 32,000 because then they're going to think that their own strength got them there. Mm -mm. I got to take this down to almost nothing so that when I deliver them through this, by giving them a strategy and giving them a plan that only comes from God, they're going to know who is it that led them into victory. So think about that. The next time you're tempted to worry to go into a panic, to stress about just this little bit you have left, whoever you are. I want you to start getting on your knees and praying to God, God, give me a strategy. Give me your plan. Show me how you want me to make moves and order my steps. You show me the next move to make and what you want to do with this. Anyway, I love you all. I pray that you are greatly encouraged. Uh, this is Z with uh, Unlocking Greatness podcast with Zenja Glass. That's the actual name of the podcast. And I just want to encourage you guys. I pray that you are tremendously blessed by this. Love you all. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness podcast. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification button. Love you all. Bye-bye.